Hey everybody, welcome to Max Fan Talk Hockey. Today we're here with ASU commit Gibson Homer. Uh, we're going to be talking mainly about how the college recruiting process works and uh, how he's gotten to that point. Um, but I guess we'll start in with a couple questions. Um, so we'll start with Ben. Yeah, uh, so Gibson, you grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and you decided to play your AAA hockey at Fox Motors. Uh, why did you decide to play at Fox Motors? and not at another high tier Michigan team such as Little Caesars or Honey Baked? Uh, that, that is a good question to start us off. Um, well, I'm from Grand Rapids and the next closest, the closest AAA team to me is Fox Motors, which is you know only 15 minutes down the road. But the next closest after that is uh, Meyer, maybe back in my day, it was Meyer. I don't know what it is now, but that's like an hour away. And then, you know, Little Caesars, Honey Bay, CompuWare, all those teams, were like two hour drives. So it was just easier for me. You know, not the biggest hockey city, you know, versus over there, but got a lot of shots growing up. Worked out for me. Yeah. Um, yesterday, we actually interviewed a WHL goalie who had to move. To, from middle of nowhere, British Columbia, uh, to Lethbridge, Alberta, just to play hockey and get in reps, just because yeah. this town was so small. So it's kind of just that's not too unheard of nowadays. Yeah, uh, there are guys that uh, I actually know in in the New Jersey high school circuit that have moved here from all over the U.S. just to play for their triple, just to play some AAA. That's insane. I'm. I'm I know a handful of kids just from Michigan. You know, I played against kids from Florida, Montana, Colorado, you know, all around Ohio. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep, there was a there's a documentary made about the 2021 North Jersey Avalanche that won the national championship. Uh and they and they had a kid from Alaska. Uh they had a couple kids from Cal. Uh I think some Illinois players and I think a Michigan guy or two. And then the rest were like New York, New Jersey guys. Um, and I think even like three Canadian guys. So actually two of them are on your team, Mick Thompson and Nick Moldenhauer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Team. They're on that team. So it just doesn't seem fair. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. So Max, I guess I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. So you were drafted in uh, both the USHL and the OHL. So what was the decision to kind of stay a little bit local in, in the U.S. instead of go up, play up uh, in the uh, CHL in Canada? Uh, I mean, you know, I got the privilege to – I made the U.S. national development team. So, you know, after, you know, I found out that I made that, I think it was just kind of a – not a no-brainer, but, you know, with – my roots, my dad played college hockey. You know, my mom's a teacher. She's pretty into education. And it just kind of made the most sense to stay around here, play out in Plymouth for a couple of years, and then go from there, which obviously led me to Chicago and now to Arizona, the way it, the way it went. Yeah, definitely. Um, and how was your experience playing up in Plymouth with the U.S. national team because they've produced some amazing products over yeah. the past few years, especially most notably that 2019 draft class. But um, how was your experience up there? And it was definitely fun. You know, I my first year there was the year of that 2019 draft class. So, you know, pretty high expectations to live up to with – I don't know, they're seven, eight first rounders, but you know, we did our best. We obviously had all the elite staff and coaches to help us out. And, you know, it was, it was great. I was just playing hockey. It was seeing my teammates, seeing my family every day. So, yeah. It was, it yeah. Was good time. How far away is Plymouth from Grand Rapids? It's only like a two hour drive, so not too bad. Oh, yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, so um, coming into this draft, there's not, uh, you know, number one hot goalie, like most years where you got like Spencer Knight, who you know is going to go in the first round. And there's actually a bunch of rankings that have you pretty high on up on the list. 
So is there any team like coming into the draft that you really want to get drafted by or just like hoping for the best? Um, hoping I get drafted. <laughs> Throw that out first. You know, I'm not too picky, but you know, if any team wants to, you know, pick me, I'm, I'd be honored to do with – I'll be honored to deal with whatever. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, Detroit, oh. I guess – would be nice since it's a little local, close to home. But it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, Detroit has some really good goalies coming up, so you could definitely learn uh, from their goalie coaches as well. They have uh, Sebastian Kosa from Edmonton yep. uh, in the dub, so he's he's extremely good. Also, he's, he's, he's one of the tallest goalies, I think, drafted from that class. He's like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, yeah. the tallest one. Yeah. The tallest one, actually, Max and I interviewed. He plays in Kelowna, Talon Boyko. He's six ten. He's a. Jeez. I know he's a giant. He's giant. Um, but yeah, um, and I think we're just gonna get uh, right in. And I think the first obvious question to ask is, why did you choose to commit to Arizona and play for the Sun Devils? Uh, I mean, the biggest thing for me was you know, the staff they had there and their trust in me. You know, when I talked to Greg Powers and Mike Field from the start, you know, it was just really apparent, like they believed in me, they trusted me, you know, when things weren't going well, they still, they still had my back, which was really good to see, you know, and just kind of their whole kind of motto is be the tradition, you know, they're, a family down there which i really uh, i really enjoyed and i mean the weather and pools down there obviously is not not the worst thing in the world but i mean the biggest thing was yeah the connection that i had with the staff and, and my belief in them too you know i think they'll be a top team coming up yeah i'm not sure if ben told you but we interviewed joey decord who also went to asu I think he won 32 games there, which is pretty impressive, and three years. And then right after that, he was on the senator, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, he's it's been nice to kind of follow him around, too, ever since I committed to ASU. Kind of role model in a way to look up to, with all the success he's had. Yeah. yeah, he's had a lot of success over there. And, uh, I mean, I guess um, how does recruiting work for college hockey? Because I come from a high school where – we have a top football team in the nation and everyone's very vocal about their offers. And I see college coaches in the halls all the time. Um, yeah. Like I see top coaches from like Clemson and Florida and LSU still haven't seen Nick Saban, unfortunately. No, I was just gonna ask that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually, I'm, I'm friendly with the recruiting coordinator in our school and he's actually spoken to Nick Saban on multiple occasions because we have some players with Alabama offers. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's definitely cool. But uh, everyone's very vocal in our school about who gets an offer from where. Um, so how does it work for hockey? I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, the difference between other sports and hockey. You know, football is obviously the most apparent one that comes to mind. Uh, you hear every person's offer, every person's conversation with whoever well hockey it's more private in a way you know usually the way it went for me was if a team was interested they'd like contact my advisor and then i would talk to my advisor and then you know i would get a chance to you know call the coaches and then from there if you know, if they really showed interest and in, we would move on to you know, more visits and things like that. But it all kind of, I guess, cycles through the advisor way instead of direct contact hmm. with the players. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, ASU is a pretty good school. So I'm sure you had a couple other colleges you were interested in. What was like the biggest thing for you when you were looking for a college? Like, was it the field school or were you looking for like a connection? Like, what was it? Uh, I mean, I think 
the the reason everyone goes to whatever college they go to is they feel like it has the best chance of them moving on to the next level or ASU. It, I felt like, you know, I could get in, maybe learn a few things, possibly get a couple games and as a freshman, maybe take the that starting role. And I mean, I just felt like it just truly gives me the best opportunity to to develop my game and make it to the next level. Yeah. Um, does going to ASU hurt you in any way, being that it's not in a specific league of sorts because um, they're one of the only Division One hockey teams in America that are, that are independent? I don't think that matters too much. I mean, you look at our schedule for next year, I think it's public now. We still is. – we play Denver, we play Minnesota, we play Minnesota State, we play North Dakota, you know, we play all these top top teams anyway. So I mean, wherever you play North Dakota, you know there's gonna be scouts and people watching. So I mean, I don't think that's too big of a factor of any sort. Got it. Yeah, I'm trying to see uh if you guys have an Instagram account of sorts that I can find your schedule or is it up on a website? Oh, I think I might have it saved to my phone somewhere too. It's not Elite Prospects too. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah here, here it is. Uh, it's it's up online. You guys play You guys play Minnesota Duluth twice, Bemidji State, Colgate, Colorado College, North Dakota, Alaska, Anchorage, Clarkson, Minnesota, Denver, New Hampshire, BC, uh, some classic uh, with, Bo- with BU, Air Force, and Michigan Tech. Then you play Minnesota, Mankato, RIT, St. Thomas, Alaska Fairbanks, Lindenwood, Alaska Fairbanks, Anchorage, Long Island, and then you have your regionals and Final Four. So that's actually a pretty packed schedule, and you guys are going all over the country. So I know. A lot of home games in there, fortunately, with our new rank being put in this year, which is nice. Yeah. Not just not just your rank, but the Arizona Coyotes rank. Yeah, <laughs> I had, to, had to add that in there. Yeah, it's crazy you know, how that all worked out, but I don't mind it. Yeah, I mean, it's pre- it's cool in one way, and it's very concerning in another that a pro team's attendance is now going to cap at five thousand instead of twenty thousand. Yeah, are you, getting, are you guys getting free tickets to some of the games? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, if anything, it's going to attract the college crowd than it is. Uh, oh, for sure. Like, I, I think just a lot of ASU uh, students are just going to go to the Coyotes games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, you've been pretty loyal on some of your teams, obviously playing for the Motors for a while on USNDP. Um so how important uh, in your experience is your freshman year on a team? And like, obviously you said you're hoping to get a couple of wins um, in your first year with ASU, but how important is freshman year? And do you have any other goals you're really looking forward to? No, not, I mean, freshman year is important, but I feel like the biggest thing is just controlling what I can control, you know, getting better each day. I kind of try to take things one day at a time, not looking towards the end of the year. I'm not looking for anything right now. Right now I'm just enjoying summer a little bit. You know, we don't have much of an off season, but yeah, just the biggest thing is just getting there, doing what I need to do to make myself the best goalie I can. And, you know, I fall things. Well, all things are, will work out in that sense if I kind of have that mindset. But, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so I, I guess the next question would be, um, because you committed to ASU, were there any other colleges that had an offer and why did, or why didn't you choose those colleges and instead chose ASU? Uh, yeah, definitely like throughout my years at NTDP and Chicago early on, I had a few other offers from other schools, but I was kind of, I wanted to wait a little bit until it gets closer to my time, at time to go to college. 
And then, you know, when I decided to go to ASU, there's a few teams interested, but I mean, I, you know, had a lot of factors, a lot of, a lot of big decisions to make. And then I don't know, just somehow landed on ASU and I'm fortunate for the way everything turned out. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, so obviously uh, committing to college, it's huge uh, what you can do on the ice, but also off the ice in the cl classroom is important too. So um, how important is, you know, having good grades uh, for, you know, committing to college? And uh, do colleges, like, really look at that kind of stuff or are they more looking at what you could do on the ice? Uh, I don't know if this is what I should be saying, but I know I know some people that aren't the best in the classroom that are still going to – top academic schools but i mean you definitely do need to be eligible <laughs> yeah if you're not eligible like what can you do but i haven't i've been pretty fortunate i've had decent grades throughout my years at high school so i haven't really had to run into that problem too much but i mean there definitely there definitely is a factor with grades like when I was getting recruited you know most schools that contacted me you know asked about my grades so it's definitely a factor that comes in but I mean if you're an absolute stud you're an absolute stud you know yeah um yeah I mean I'm talking to a couple of colleges for rowing already and they've asked about my kids and how I'm doing and uh I think it's, it, it's important in most sports. I think the exceptions being football and basketball and to an extent, even baseball. Um, but apart from that, it's just like all you're, you're there not just to play your sport, but also to go to school. And let's say hockey doesn't work out. You're also, you, you need to find some way to make a career and make money so you could live comfortably. So definitely, um, having good grades in high school is a start. And um, what are you going to be majoring in uh, at ASU, and why did you choose that major? Yeah, I chose – they have a sports business program, which that's kind of what I ha have right now planned out. But, I mean, my freshman year, I'll just mostly be taking gen eds and some business, you know, introductory classes. So if I do want to switch up, like it's not too late or anything. And uh, going back to that other point before, I just wanted to mention that, you know, when you think of hockey players, like they're usually a pretty smart bunch in general. You know, yeah. you, you, you don't see many guys like failing in the classroom. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I feel like hockey, like you mentioned basketball and football, even baseball, you know, it's not as important, but I feel like in general, hockey players would have better grades in general, you know, I just want yeah. to get that out there. Yeah. That's, that's definitely shown in my school. A lot of the hockey players are on the honor roll yeah. and the ones that aren't are like just shy of cut off. Um, but yeah, the football players, I, I have to help one of the football players out with some homework sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not challenging, but just, they take easy classes, and unfortunately in America, uh, we have this system where it doesn't really matter all about your grades if you can play a sport in the cases of football and basketball. But, I mean, it works out for them, so I guess it's totally fine. And even for basketball, we have, we have a senior who is committed to Villanova, and today he just made the U.S. under-18 team. Um He's uh, one of the best players in the nation. So um, I know he definitely he, – he was actually a pretty good student, which was yeah, – Villanova is not, you know, too easy of a school to get into. No, it's it's very difficult. It's also very good at basketball. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's insane what he can do. But um, Arizona State's definitely up and coming. Um, Max and I are also trying to get a uh, second-round pick Josh Doan. I know he's playing at uh asu so um that's also cool um yeah, he's a good guy yeah um and i guess uh 
I, I think my last question is going to be, what would you say to an upcoming hockey player who's looking to get recruited for college? Um, just keep your head down and keep working, really. You know, a lot of times people get to, you know, kind of locked up in results. And really, you know, the biggest thing is just the process. And, you know, if you're good enough, you'll you notice. The ambulance there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's on my end. There's probably yeah. something going around. Yeah, if you're good enough, you know you're gonna be noticed. College recruiters, they're they get they're good at what they do. So yeah, you know, just keep your head down, keep working, and you know have that positive attitude. And you know, I really believe things usually do work out. Yeah, totally, Max. Yeah, um, my last question is. Have you gotten to speak to any of the coaches yet? And, you know, after you kind of told them yes, were you able to, like, kind of speak to any of the players or how, how did that kind of work out? Yeah, one of my teammates at NTDP, Ty Murchison, he goes there now. So I've been in contact with him a good amount. And then actually Josh Stone, he, his, when he was in Chicago for the Steel, he lived with the same family that I lived with. <laughs> So it's kind of kind of a small world there, but I've kind of been in contact with them a little bit. All the all the freshmen kind of get to know each other a little bit here and there. So yeah, yeah, um, that's definitely cool. Um, so I guess uh, our time is up right now. Um, thank you so much, Gibson, for coming on. Yeah, thank, thank you, you guys for having me. Yeah, no problem. And for the viewers, thank you so much for, for watching. Uh, please click like and subscribe. And our next guest is going to be 2021 second round pick Logan Stankoven from the Kamloops Blazers. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you, everyone.